this is my first time to uh, display and show how to make chili. But, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and start that this is uh, Cuernos Grande Safari's edition of how you make chili for either at the camp or if you're out camping or doing something. But uh, normally you'd be outdoors cooking on all these Dutch ovens and stuff, but we're not doing it outdoors, we're inside the kitchen. We took this weekend off from hunting, so I'm gonna give it a shot, so we'll see. I got some onions, green peppers, and jalapenos sauteing right now as we speak. This chili today that we're gonna make is gonna be made out of nail guy. If you don't know what a nail guy is, it was imported in the late 19, or late 1800s to uh, early 1900s to Asia, to South Texas. Uh, over the years, they've, uh, they've overpopulated. You can see them anywhere in Claiborne County to Kennedy County to Willis County. They've seen them as far north as Del Rio. But uh, the meat is very lean. There is hardly any fat to it. So uh, we're going to cook this. I'm gonna get it going. It's gonna take a little bit. But, um, so, who is Cuerno's Grande Safari? Well, started several years ago when Buddy and I started hunting together annually. And, uh, we just decided to take his first initial and my first initial and come up with a hunting club name and came up with uh, the C and the G as Cuernos Grande. We added safaris because every time him and I go hunting together, it is always an adventure. Something always happens, no matter what. And uh, so we just started calling it Cuernos Grande Safaris Adventures. And uh, that's where we're at today. So uh, while we let this cook, we will come over here, move our onions and green peppers and jalapenos that are sauteing over here, come together. So uh, let's see, a little bit about myself. I don't remember if I introduced myself. Did I introduce myself? No, I didn't. So I'm Gumi De La Rosa, short for Gumisino De La Rosa. I'm from a little small town in South Texas called Riviera, Texas. And um, my, uh, my buddy Cameron Nelson lives up in Blanco, Texas. And uh, He's the one, the other co-founder to Cardinal Grande Safari. So last week we went to uh, Seymour, Texas to take our boys buck hunting. And uh, we were not very successful to help our boys get a deer. But uh, Cameron was able to score a nine point after his son missed. But uh, last year, uh, Cadence went with me on the veterans hunt that I was nominated for and uh, I gave my shot to Cadence and it was his first deer and of all deers his first deer was an Axis and if you've never had Axis meat it is probably the next best thing to know that we eat and cook everything that we kill and we love nail guy meat, so hints to say why we're doing our chili and nail guy. But if you can ever score some Axis meat, that is some good stuff. I made some uh, carne guisada out of Axis, and it is amazing. So continue to keep cooking here. 
gonna add a little bit more oil to help cook. So, got my notes right here to help me. We are making what we are gonna call Cuernos Grande Chili for the Safari. And uh, last week, like I was saying, when we went to Seymour, we cooked a big meal. My son and I cooked a meal for us. Uh, Cameron smoked a uh, wild hog for eight to nine hours. And then we used all the juices and flavoring that were left in the pan that he had been smoking. And we brought it to a boil inside of this Dutch oven right here. And we uh, simmered it for another two hours with Gosa beer from Real Ale in OMG, that stuff was so good. Then we cooked, uh, what else did we cook? Uh, potato, I think we cooked. Ta potatoes. Potatoes, we cooked. Uh, asparagus. Corn, asparagus. Um, let's see, what else did we cook? Red beans and rice. And uh, all in all, I have to say, all the hunters that were there with us and family of cameras that were with us, they were very, very impressed and with great. the meal that we had. Um, so now that we got this going, what I'm going to do is, we've already browned this meat pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and throw in this sauteed stuff that we got right here into the mix so that I can use this pot for the next round of meat products that we're going to throw into the mix. Something that's a little bit different. Some people may do it. I don't know. This is just a recipe that I have come up with. So let's get this in there. That looks so good right now. Now, I want to say use cast iron as much as you can for when you're making chili because it truly brings the bold flavor and taste out in these meals that you're preparing out in camp or in the comfort of your own home. So let's move this over here. Keeping it warm at six. Come over here and cook these. So here is what I like that brings the flavor. This is wild pig Mexican chorizo that we're going to cook. So the other ingredient is nail guy Mexican chorizo mixed together into this combination of some great chorizo and chorizo, Mexican chorizo together with anything you cook just brings out the flavor to me it's just awesome amazing so Let's cook this chorizo. Let's see, what else? What can we talk about as far as the hunting experience? So, when you're at a campfire or you're at camp, you're telling stories of stuff that happens, right? Well, last year, Well, it was back in March, I believe. My wife saw a nail guy in our back pasture. And we had already been hunting nail guy for a while. A lot of our friends and family would come and hunt. And uh, she said, you know what? I want to hunt a nail guy. I've seen one out there. He's big. 
I want to shoot one. I was like, all right. So then that evening, I got home. It was cold that evening, and I said, well, it's pretty good weather. I told her, you're going to have to bundle up. You're going to have to get up into some coveralls. We're going to camo. We're going to camp out, and we're going to wait for this sucker to come out. So there's ain't gonna be no 15 minutes and you're done. That's exactly what I told you. So we go out there, we're hiding underneath the mesquite tree. In less than 15 minutes, that sucker walked out and I about had a heart attack. And she thought I was having a heart attack because I couldn't even breathe because I saw that sucker. And he was huge. And he came in range of her, he got close got to about 100, 110 yards, and he was just steadily walking and eating, walking and eating. And I told her, the moment that he stops, just put it into him. And before I could even end my sentence, I just hear the rifle, boom, right there, about dropped him, dead in his tracks. Her very first kill, and it was a big bull nail guy, nine three quarter inch horns trophy unbelievable i didn't believe we were going to be there for the amount of time that we were there and, she had to stand up. and what she had to stand up and it was bigger than her oh yeah so if you've seen the pictures she's standing up and that sucker is huge about as big as a horse but uh that was her hunting experience so now that we got this chorizo pretty much browned very well, we're now going to dump this chorizo into the pot with our meat. We're going to go ahead and throw in these 
small cups of uh, tomato sauce into the mix. Get a little bit of flavor in there. Don't want to leave anything out. Fill them out. You don't have to do this at home if you don't want to. I'm just trying to come up with topics to talk about to tell y'all. But at the same time, we're going to savor every drip that we can. So we're going to put this into the mix. Bacon is still doing pretty good. Let's, uh... So, uh, one thing I want to say is we got Christmas music in the background, even though it hasn't even hit Thanksgiving yet and the turkey hasn't had its day yet. But uh, we just feel in the spirit to listen to it. But we do not own the rights to that music, but just wanted to put that out there for this video. All right, so we have all this going on. I believe this is a quarter cup of uh, Wishire sauce. I don't know if I said that right, but no oh, way. Well. So I'm gonna let this mix it into that mix. Man, that looks good. Hands, come get this camera into the pot of chili so far. Alright, so we still have the bacon cooking right here. Don't let them see my my uh, recipe because there's some things that they can't see that I don't want them to see. Now we're going to throw uh, parsley. Put your parsley in there. Let's go ahead and throw in our minced garlic. All of this is for flavor. This is our uh, house seasoning that my wife made. Uh, you can make whatever seasoning you want. And we just have about a quarter cup of it. You can put whatever you want into it. You have to have cumin into your chili to bring out that flavor. I think I said this is about two, just about three or four, I think it's three pounds of nail guy and a uh, half a pound of chorizo and a uh, half a pound of Nelgai Mexican chorizo. So all together, four pounds of meat. Let's uh, Bacon is cooking looks good. rather well right now. The bacon looks good. It does look good. But we need to get it a little bit more crunchy. So we'll go back to mixing this. Now, anybody can do whatever they want to do as far as chili powder, paprika, depending on how hot you want your chili, whatever. But uh, we're using uh, four tablespoons uh, chili powder, um, you can get whatever kind of chili powder you want. Um, but, uh, I'm gonna let this stay in there. And we're going to put in our chili powder. This is gonna thicken up our chili already. Now we'll 
the flavor is going to start coming out. The redness and darkness is going to start coming out in the chili. You're going to start to smell a different smell. Well, at least we are. Can you see that it's already turning dark? Hmm? Yeah, I can. Right. And I'm zooming in so they can see it. This smells delicious. Bacon is almost done. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a break from videoing here in just a bit. And we're going to put our bacon into our chili. We're going to let it simmer for about an hour to two hours, maybe an hour and a half. And then we'll do our second part of the end product of our Cuernos Grande Chili for the Safari. But so far, this is what we have. Stay tuned to part two in just a little bit. All right, part two of our Mill Guy Cuernos Grande Chili for the Safari has come to close after an hour and a half of simmering and cooking. We added the bacon that was in this pot earlier and uh, I added my own secret ingredient. That's why we had to like stop. But while we were in the process of it cooking and everything, my wife and Chloe made some cornbread, as you can see. And um, we are now going to serve this chili into a bowl, as you can see. Excuse me, I got a little bit too much Smoke. smoke in my face. Now just for garnishing to make it look pretty, we're gonna put some uh, green onions over the top. Then we're gonna sprinkle some uh, cheese. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. We have just finished Cuernos Grande chili for the safari. This is the end product of four pounds of total chili. Thank y'all for watching this video. I will post up the uh, recipe later on at the end of this video when we get done. But I want to say thank you to my wife and to my kids for helping me out through the process. And uh, we hope that you enjoy this video. Give me a thumbs up, a like, or whatever. And uh, more videos to come. We're gonna make videos of our hunting trips, our outdoor camping, our fishing trips, anything outdoors, anything that Cuernos Grande can get involved in, we're gonna do it. Um, but mostly we're going to show uh, cooking and uh, hunting on this page. So uh, thank y'all very much.